We're here to idea everyone, to fire up your curiosity and connect you with the people and ideas that shape our world. Watch, listen, understand, connect, create. Let's move the human story forward together. Hello and welcome to The Poetry of Science, a podcast which provides insight into new scientific research via the medium of poetry. I'm your host, Dr. Sam Illingworth, and each week I'll be introducing you to some of the latest scientific findings and sharing a selection of science themed to poetry. We could all do with a little bit more poetry in our lives. In this episode, I'll be exploring new research, which has found that the absence of visual imagination can be detected by looking at how the pupils respond to light. Auroras of white skim forehead moons, quivers of light that push and pull at the edges of your optics as shifting spheres dance with ease across a bounded stage of sight. Unreal shapes pass by, every curve and flex expressed in sounds that flutter out of reach. Unflinching orbs of static black, waiting for cues that cannot be seen. This poem is inspired by recent research published in eLife, which has found that aphantasia can be detected with an eye-opening look into our pupils. Aphantasia is a phenomenon in which people are unable to visualise imagery. People that are affected by this condition have no mind's eye, meaning that their imagination is essentially blind. They are unable to visualise mental images such as a friend's face, a favourite landscape, or a cherished memory. If you were to ask a person with aphantasia to imagine something, they could likely describe the object, explain the concept, and present you with facts that they know about the object in question. However, they would not be able to experience any sort of mental image to accompany this knowledge. Not being able to visualise people and places can be distressing for people with aphantasia. Yet many people with this condition do not even realise that their experience is any different than that of other people. In this new study, researchers first worked with participants who did not suffer from aphantasia, i.e. people who reported having a visual imagination. After confirming that the pupils of these participants responded to light, the researchers found that even in response to imagined bright and dark shapes, their pupils still constricted and dilated appropriately. The researchers then repeated this test with participants suffering from aphantasia. Exposing these participants to bright and dark shapes, the researchers found that these individuals exhibited the same pupillary responses as those with a visual imagination, i.e. constriction to bright shapes and dilation to dark ones. However, when these participants were asked to imagine those same shapes, their pupillary response did not significantly differ in response to imagined dark versus imagined bright. These findings therefore provide evidence that the pupillary light response indicates the sensory strength of visual imagery, as well as the first physiological validation of aphantasia. Now that you've heard the science, let me read the poem to you again. Auroras of white skim forehead moons, quivers of light that push and pull at the edges of your optics, as shifting spheres dance with ease across a bounded stage of sight. Unreal shapes pass by, every curve and flex expressed in sounds that flutter out of reach, unflinching orbs of static black, waiting for cues that cannot be seen. In this section of the podcast, I'd like to share a poem written by another poet on a topic related to the science that has been discussed so far. In this episode, I'll be reading The Mind's Eye by David M. Graham. David M. Graham is an American poet who was born and raised in Johnstown, New York. He has a BA in English Literature and Creative Writing from Dartmouth College and an MFA in English from the University of Massachusetts. 
Graham has published six collections of poetry, including Common Waters, published in 1986, Second Wind, published in 1990, and The Honey of Earth, published in 2019. He retired in 2016 from teaching writing and literature at Ripon College in Ripon, Wisconsin, where he also hosted their Visiting Writers series for 28 years. The Mind's Eye by David M. Graham. We call this night the night, for sleep is always itself and dream and by the light of habit. Our habits are illuminated, like light thrown back on itself until it grows single-minded, the mind cuts glass, etches steel and burns with pure attention. We call a solo diner a party of one. The mind's party is always on, especially when it's late, it's lonely and it's crowded with dark. The fields are different every hour, light changes more than rain, snow, the withering harvest. We walk, then expecting to be changed as we are. Work, we call whatever it is, we do often or well, we talk, give thanks, think of reasons for postponement, we work like hell, we call despair, despair and a shiver, nothing but the moon is cold, we say, frigid ourselves and searching a cold beauty, we call the end, the beginning, it is the end. Thank you for listening to the Poetry of Science. Thank you very much for being with us for this episode of the Idea Me Show. Idea Me is a global platform. Our mission is to move the human story forward by sharing knowledge of the future. You can find us on all major audio networks at www.radioideame.com, on YouTube and Vimeo. Please subscribe.